be back. Um, obviously, uh, this is a big year for Oakland basketball. It's a huge year. Um, who would have thought, you know, we played Michigan State to open this building 20 years ago, 19 years ago. And, uh, man, Mike Tome made a shot with about four. Michigan State, I think, was ranked fourth in the country. Mike Tome made a three with about six or seven minutes going to have to put us ahead. And, you know, everybody's like wide-eyed. We're at the, this Division Two team's actually playing with Michigan State. And everybody walked away that night thinking, you know, what a special night. But nobody remembers we lost by 30, you know. And who would have thought when you walked away from that night that, you know, we would be sitting here talking about playing Michigan State in this the greatest arena in the country, both teams receiving, you know, heavy accolades as national, you know, top 25, 30 teams in the country. Um, so we've come a long way in the last 19 years to, to be where we're at. But I really think that this season, you know, we've been a nice little story, and I've been fighting that, that we're not a nice little story, that this is who we are now, and that, that you can have a, a third team. You know, look what Gonzaga did in Washington, Washington, and Washington State, and they had to fight through it. And you know what, that's what we've always been trying to do here, is to get to that level. And I think this is a year that we can legitimize that with, because um, we have, we have, to not just have a great regular season, we have to win our conference tournament and get to the NCAA tournament and do something in the NCAA tournament. And if we can do that, then I think we legitimized the last 19 years and, and I think we've arrived. We're not just a, a team that's here or not here. I know if if you were at the Central Michigan game the other day when, when you saw us take the floor, we, I mean, you could have put a Big Ten team's jersey on us and you would have believed that's a Big Ten team our size, our length, our athleticism. You know, we've come so far um, that that's what we are now. So, you know, now we, we've got to get it done. And our kids understand that pressure. And I'm okay with it because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make a wager with anybody here that wants to wager with me, but I'm going to wager that we are the oldest team in the country. Uh, I don't know that because I haven't spent the time looking, but one of you research geniuses can find out. Um, I mean, if you take our top seven play, if we played, if Jalen Hayes was available to play tonight and we played, our top seven rotation average is 22 years old. And i got to believe there's not another team in the country that can say that. Uh, we got 24-year-old, uh, five 22-year-olds, and a 20 year old Braylon's 20 is the only really young guy that plays. This group of guys has seen everything. There's nothing we haven't seen. There's no one place we haven't been. There's no nothing that can scare us, nothing that we'll see that we haven't seen before. Uh, no pressure packed moment. Uh, you know, we've, we've won in an NIT game. We've come from 20 back to win. We've lost to a team that we beat by 34 a week before on a shot at the buzzer. We, we made a missed a couple free throws. We've been in those positions. So this is a team that should be able to handle anything that they see this year. This is a team that should not have to worry about the pressure of it. And there will be an unbelievable amount of pressure going into March because this team is 38 and 14 in league play. And the senior class is 38 and 14 in league play and has never won a postseason Horizon Conference tournament game. So whether we win the league, whatever we do, it's still going to come down to that because that's how they're going to be judged. Their, their, their legacy when they leave here. You know what? If we win 13 games in the league this year, we will be the winningest program in conference play in the history of the Horizon League. Now, Horizon League's 100 years old. And if you go back and look at the teams that have played in that league, there are big, big names that came from that league. And right now, if we win 13 games, we'll pass Xavier as the, in league play, the winningest percentage-wise team ever. And yet, if we don't win a conference tournament game, this senior class will be remembered for that, not for all the great things they did. So we understand that. We understand the pressure. We're prepared for it. We talk about it every day. Every day since we've convened to start this season, we have talked about this. So it's not going to be something that, that we're not ready for. Anybody want to take my bet on the age?
Anybody want to do the research? <laughs> All right. Questions? Yes. You cited uh, Gonzaga as an example for you to follow on. How much do you uh, also look at uh, what Wichita State was able to do the last few years? Well, I use Gonzaga because everybody knows Gonzaga and because they're in a state out in the middle of nowhere that nobody had heard of. They, they don't have, they're like Oakland. We have a name that isn't recognizable. Uh, I mean, I've recruited kids. I hired somebody. Honest to God, I hired a kid uh, to be a video guy. And he thought he was going to California. He did. I mean, he, he accepted the job and then found out that he was going to Michigan. I mean, our name is not recognizable like that. Although we've now I think we've gotten to that point that it is. But when we first started this, people thought we were in California. And Gonzaga was, who knew where that was? There was Washington, Washington State, two state you know, schools that have their, their great rivalry like Michigan and Michigan State has. And so we fight that every day in recruiting. We fight. No kid grows up wanting to go to Oakland. You know, when, when, when I walk into an arena with Tom Mizzo, People say, hey, there's Tom Izzo, oh, and there's the Oakland coach. You know, that, that's, that's the thing that we've fought for so long. And it's a really tough battle. Now, you, we're, we're never going to be Gonzaga because Gonzaga's coach makes $3 million a year. I don't. Their, their basketball budget is probably eight times what our basketball budget is. I mean, money speaks in this business. But I use the Gonzaga term as because it fits that, you know, there's two schools there and they now everybody, when you talk about a school in Washington, the first person they talk about is Gonzaga. That's never going to happen to Oakland, but I just want to be in the same breath. That's my goal of coaching. That's for the last 20 years that we've done this, this is my goal. Not to win a game, not to win a championship, not, but to the public and the fans and the kids going to the high schools that pick a college to go to that they put Oakland on the same plane as Michigan and Michigan State. That's been my dream that I've chased. How, how long ago did you make the decision to kind of go back to a non-conference schedule? It was more like 20 years past. This one's definitely more challenging. Well, the, 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 our, my new athletic directors had everything to do with the schedule. And he's got a philosophy, and he's come in and changed uh, what we were doing at the time. Um, this team had, a, had, su had such a chance to be good, and, you know, we could, we could be receiving these votes as we're receiving and then not play anybody, and then they're going to say, well, they haven't played anybody. And they're not going to be able to do that against them for us. We're playing Kansas, Syracuse, Michigan State. We're playing a very good group of mid-majors here. I mean, Fort Wayne's really good. They beat Indiana last year. Uh, New Orleans went to the NSA tournament last year. You just go down the road, and there's a good team coming in every time. Texas Southern might be the best of all the teams that are coming in. They beat Tulane in one of those scrimmages the other day, and then Tulane beat LSU in the hurricane game. I mean, this schedule is very difficult. We're going to face somebody every night, and it's a chance to prove ourselves. I don't have to worry about youth and trying to get anybody better and things like that, because I, I just got to worry about this team peaking and playing. But, you know, we've been an unbelievable February team, because I believe we win conference championships in February. And, if you look at it, I don't think there's five teams in the country that are better than us in February in the last, in the last 10 years. We're, I think we're 9-0 in February last year. The problem is in March, the last three years, we haven't been very good. So our focus this year is more on March than it is. And the, the, yeah, I want to win the conference championship because for me, winning conference championships, is, if I just took my opinion and my views, that's all I really care about. I want to win the conference championship because that's a, that's a statement of your team and your season not three days in March. But unfortunately, that's all social media cares about. That's all fans care about is they, they want to win. They want to go to the NCAA tournament. They want to do that. So I'm understanding that with this team, and we're going to try and do that. Plus, we want to stay down there. And we know that if we can get to the championship game down there, they're going to have three unbelievable crowds. They're going to make money, and they're going to want to keep the rising tournament there. And so, you know, that's on my shoulders, not our shoulders, too. That, that we've got to do that for a lot of reasons. So my personal view of just winning the conference, I got to push that aside this year. I've got to, we've got to remain focused, and that's what I, in my opening remarks. That's what I was talking about. We're focusing on that conference tournament. What about player wise? Can you talk about the depth and how deep this team is? Well, you know, I, I I have as much talent as I've ever had. One through twelve. I said that last year too. 
The problem with saying that, though, is everybody wants to see those guys. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Kendrick Nunn's going to play a lot of minutes. Martez Walker's going to play a lot of minutes. Jalen Hayes is going to play a lot of minutes. Um, Isaiah Brock is going to play a lot of minutes. And Nick Daniels is going to play a lot of minutes. That's five guys. And I didn't even talk about one of the starters. So if you've got all those minutes to those players, when you have players like that, they're going to play. So I've got two kids that I think if they were somewhere else, could be the freshman of the year in this league. I think James Beck and Stan Scott could both be player of the year in this conference. I mean, uh, freshman of the year in this conference. But they're not even going to get a vote because they're not going to get enough minutes this year. Now, are they going to get minutes? Yes. Are they going to get put in there at times to help us? Yeah. Can we have an injury? Sure. Can I rest somebody? Yes. But in the focus of this team, when you have players like I have, they got to play. And they will. That's just the way I coach them. You lose one rival in Valpo, but you gain back another one in IUPUI in the conference. Can you talk a little bit about your feelings about that? Yeah, I, I, it kind of kind of upsets me that, that uh, I keep reading that, yeah, Oakland's so good, and because Valpo's gone, it helps them. We, we were the number one seed in the tournament last year, and Valpo didn't win that tournament either year either. In fact, they didn't win a game either. They lost both their first games just like we did. Now, I wonder if that conference tournament had been at Oakland. Who knows what would happen, but it's not. It's in that building, and we want it in that building. That's, that's the best thing for our conference to have it there. So when they sit there and talk, I don't care about Bola. Babe Ruth's been dead for 100 years, and they still play. I mean, they had the greatest World Series they've ever had this past week. Um, but Horizon League's a great league with great teams, and we'll just, we're will just ready to play whoever shows up. The only rival that I look at is Detroit, and that's because I don't like them. <laughs> Sticking the baseball for just a second, what are your thoughts about JV winning the World Series with the Astros? Uh, really, I wish you would have won it the night before. Um, but yeah, I was a, you know, I'm a big Tiger fan, and I think he's going to go to the Hall of Fame or in the English D, so I'm excited that he can put that on his resume. Yeah, very happy for him. Anything else? Have you made any adjustments in the way that you're coaching just based on the health scare that you had earlier this year? Or? I hope not. You know, I hope not. Um, yeah, it was a tough deal. Um, my biggest concern to that is I'm, I don't take care of myself during the season, and I'm going to have to do that. You know, I mean, I, this business is a tough business, and you know, people on the outside really don't see, you know, what we do uh, and what it does to us. You know, you you will lose a game, and somebody will tweet. Or, you know what? Let me talk about something. Michigan State's the perfect example. I mean, Michigan State football fans should be kicked in the, you know. A year ago, they wanted to get rid of one of the best coaches in the country. You know, a couple things happened, they had a bad year. Now all of a sudden he's great again, you know. Um, that's our profession. So, you know, when the season starts and you lose a game you shouldn't lose, or, you know, or the game's close and, and you're, you know, you're feeling the heat of that, I'm an eater. Good. You know, so that's 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 what I'm worried about. You know, and and not sleeping. I mean, you, you, it's not just me. I'm just not pointing at me. It's up as a professional and a college basketball coach in the country. It sleeps during those six months. You know, if, if you get a four hours of sleep one night, that's a great thing. And so I'm worried about that. How that will affect my thing on the court. The good thing is, is this team doesn't need to be coached. You know, they're going to get yelled at because that's who I am. But they don't need to be coached. They know our offense. They know what works. They know why I do things. I mean, they're, they're, they're old. They've been around. So for me, having that happen and coming into this year, I'm, I'm not worried at all. If there's, one, if there's one thing that keeps you up at night that would prevent you from reaching your ultimate goal this season, what would that be? Worried about our point guard play. Uh, I'm worried about rebounding. As great as, rebound, as, great as athletes as we are, um, and then I'm worried about our emphasis on defense. The, the uh, when you have, and, and I think I can talk about this as well as anybody. When you have kids that can score the way we can score, they they fall into this belief that they can outscore teams to win. And and the concentration on defense is, you know, last year, even though we averaged 80 some points a game, which is a lot, 
we won because of our defense. Because when we believed in it, with Sharon, and, and Sharon was kind of a, a, I don't want to call him a fake, but uh, a misnomer that he was a great defensive player. He really wasn't. But he believed he was, and he brought that, that swag to the rest of the team that defense was important. And um, so everybody believed in it. Uh, and, and with Isaiah protecting the rim, and you know, he's as good a, Pat and I were talking a little bit ago, he's as good a rim protector, in my opinion, as there is in the country. And so when you can protect the rim and you have length and you can get after the ball, you know, look at the stats last year. We, we were the number one team in the country in ball screen defense. We were in the top 40 in transition defense. We were, when you play the way we play, transition defense is of the utmost importance. And against Central Michigan, we weren't very good in transition defense. So that bothered. Our half court defense was as good as it was last year, but our transition defense wasn't good. So that worries me, and it's more of a mindset that these kids, well, you know, we're going to score 100. Why, you know, all we got to do is have one more than they do. So that worries me. Point guard play worries me. And uh, um, just that rebounding. But I always worry about rebounding. You said now with Sharon gone, he brought that belief. Do you Kind of have to manufacture that? Yeah, well, Nick something. Daniels. Nick Daniels is tremendous. I mean, he, he's, here's a kid. I've never coached a kid in my life that wanted to play at Oakland as much as Nick Daniels does. And so he can do no wrong in my eyes because that kid loves Oakland, loves the program. When he, We went to the, uh, our cross country teams, won the conference tournament, uh, which we held on campus last week. It was cold and raining and everything, and they did a great job. But we, t we went as a team, and Nick Daniels wore his varsity jacket. I mean, that's just who he is. He loves Oakland. So I, I have no issue with somebody. He, he will lead us. He will make people do what they're supposed to do. And, and if we, it, he'll be another voice besides the coaching staff ringing in their ears how important this possession of defense is and, and that. So I'm not, Sean was great, one of the best leaders I've ever had, but we, we have to move on. That's college sports, you move on. What was your reaction when you heard that Brock wouldn't play this year and then that he would play this year? Well, I cried when I heard he wouldn't play. I, um, I was in the hospital when, when all that went down, so I didn't know a lot of what was going on. Um, I, we finally got it to have a, a meeting a, a while after that, and it made a lot of sense what he said to me. I mean, he's, he's 24 years old. He, he was in the Army. He had no clue that college basketball was going to be like being in the Army. I mean, I was probably as tough as some of his drill sergeants were. Um, he had to show up every day. He had to be on a schedule. He had a teammates. He had responsibilities. And I think when he got out of the Army that he was kind of looking forward to life without that. Plus, the winter semester last year, he didn't do as well as he felt he should do academically. And a lot of that was because we were on the road in this class and things like that. So he had a moment in his life where he, you know, I'm not going to be a pro, which I'm not sure he's right on. Um, and I've got to get my priorities right. I've got to go to class. I, I want to be a bi biology major. I want to do all those things. And he said, you know what? I'm going to give basketball up and do that. Well, then basketball starts, and here's a 6'9 kid walking around campus, and everybody's wondering why you aren't playing. Because imagine if you're him, everywhere you go, people are asking you, why are you playing? Why are you playing? What's wrong? Well, you know what? Did Campy hit you? Did you hit Campy? Did you know? Did he yell at you? Did you know why? I mean, everybody had their own opinion of why he wasn't going to play. And I think he got tired of that, and I think he got he missed basketball. And so, yeah, I think our whole team was excited that he would come back because number one, he's a great kid. Number two is he's a great player. I mean, he doesn't have to touch the ball, and he affects the game. I mean, he really affects the game. So we were elated that he came back. You said uh, your relationship with him has, has grown. Uh, in your in your eyes, how's, how's your relationship with him grown? Well, I, I, I heard, when I met with him, I heard his concerns. And you know what, and not much of it was right. I treated him like a freshman, and he was 23 years old, and he probably, you know, I, I'm not the greatest with freshmen. You know, most freshmen are immature and they need, I'm an old school guy, and they need to be 
told what to do, how to do it, and they need to be held accountable for doing it right. And then as they grow and learn, I, I'm not, you know. And I think, um, you know, I saw greatness in him, and I tried to bring that greatness out. And he, he was just trying to understand life. I mean, remember when he graduated from high school, you know, he hadn't done anything. And then his four years in the army, which is not real life. I mean, that's that. When I went and saw him in Kuwait and saw what those soldiers do in that, that isn't real life. You know, that's not a life that many people, I mean, that, and you're walking around and you're, when I landed in Kuwait, we were supposed to go four or five different places and it ended up we couldn't go because there had been a car bombing the day before. And so now I got, I got put into a van that had curtains on it and taken to the base, you know, and I had to stay in that base all the eight days I was there. I mean, I think about that. Now. And here's a guy, he's 130 degree weather wearing the stuff, you know, wearing full uniform every day protecting our country. That's not the life you and I grew up with. And so now he comes back into real life and he, you know, I think he's got to find a way to fit in. And so now I, I understand that better because of what I went through with him. And I think I can do a better job of coaching him. And that coaching is more than just basketball. I mean, it's coaching in life, too. I mean, our kids have got to leave here with a degree and, and ready to go out and prepare themselves so they can have successful lives. And they have to be great people when they leave. That's part of my job. Of all your teams, is this the one that's most poised preseason to make the tournament? No, um, 2011, we we had Keith Benson back, and we had Will Hudson back, and we had Reggie Hamilton. And that team had many of the expectations this team has. The difference between this team and that team is that team hadn't done anything. They had won a championship, and we went. We played Pittsburgh in the NSA tournament, and we were beating them, and Derek Nelson got a cut over his eye, and by the time we got him back, we were behind. We ended up losing by 20. Um, that the next year, they didn't know going into that year how good they were. And again, we were a pretty, you know, cute story then. And then we beat Tennessee, who was ranked seventh in the country, and then these expectations came down. And we lose to Texas in the first round of the NSA tournament, Texas by four. And Texas had three guys drafted in the first round. And we had one drafted in the second round. So that that was more our coming out into the real world of what it's like to be in the big time, that team. And that team had a lot of expectations on it, too. I think this is different. You know, I'm not saying this team's better than that team. At the end of the year, we'll know. I mean, it can be. Um, we have three guys on this team that the NBA is looking at. We've had three players play in the NBA in the last 10 years. There aren't 25 schools in this country that can say that. Again, I'd like somebody to do research on that, but I've been using that in recruiting. There aren't 25 teams in this country that can say they've had three NBA players in the last you know, the blue bloods, you go Michigan, Michigan State, Kentucky, those. But then all of a sudden you get to 10 or 12 of those, and then you look and, oh no, Northwestern has them, Purdue has, you know. So we got three on one team that right now, you know, you got Kendrick Nunn, who I think who could be a lottery pick. You got Martez Walker, who's on everybody's radar. And you've got Jalen Hayes, who I don't, I don't know if he's going to be a draft pick, but he's surely is going to be one of those two-way contract guys as soon as the you know the draft's over. A team's going to call him and give him a you know come on come to camp, come play in the summer league. We got three guys on one team like that. That's that's never happened here before. That's the growth of the program. So that was a long answer to your question. I don't even remember what your question was, <laughs> but um, I think that team in 2011 had the same type of expectations. We just didn't know then that we were a cute story then. We're not a cute story anymore. Our fans are mad. I mean, think about this. We won 25 games last year. We beat two Power Five teams. We won a game in the NI tournament, NIT tournament. We had an unbelievable year, and there are people out there that are fans and season ticket holders that think we had a terrible year. That's the expectations that this program has got. We didn't have those expectations in 2001. Talk to smart media about this, about the frustration in the NCAA's decision about Jalen. Just the message it sends. If you know, fortunately, he's lumped. There's three cases right now that people are scratching their head. <coughs> he's lumped into one of those three cases, which is good because then it's the focus isn't on Oakland. I don't want to focus on him. 
The bad part about it is that people are out there saying, oh, he's academically ineligible. He must be a bad student. He's a 2-9 student and he's going to graduate from one of our toughest majors in December. You have to have a 2-8 in your major classes here in that, in that major. When you get to be a junior and senior and you take HRD whatever, you, you got to get a 2-8 to pass it. You got a 2-5 in a class. Now he also didn't, he also screwed some other classes up, but if he weren't playing basketball, he would nothing. I mean, he'd be fine. He's beyond. It, the rule is a uh, satisfactory progress rule, and because he had taken all his other classes, you know, all his electives, he couldn't take an elective. So he, he had a very short. He was about to graduate. He had a very short. You guys that have graduated know this. You have a very short group of classes left to take. Well, the NCAA doesn't look at that as, you know, they don't look at that circumstance of that, that that's just a big over-encompassing rule. And, you know, their big thing was, well, they gave them a break in cutting some of the games, but we don't want to set precedents. Well, my answer to that is, why wouldn't you want to set precedents? Anybody else in the same position should should be able to play. And we even said, we even put forth, look, if he doesn't graduate, we'll, we'll sit in the first four games of our conference season which I would never want to do, but that's how sure we are he's going to graduate. He's a, he's a great student. I mean, here's an inner city kid that's come to, come to Oakland and wanted a meaningful degree. He didn't want a degree that, you know, I, I can just get through and all I got to do is pass these classes. He wanted a, a degree that he could use, something he wants to do in life. And he took on one of the toughest degrees at Oakland. I mean, I, I have a pretty good degree at Bowling Green, and there was no rules there that I had to have a 2-8 in the class. 2-0, yes, but 2-8, you know, that, that never happened. And he took that on, and, you know, now he's being punished for it. Regarding Ginny Lynn's potential NBA career, has there been any emphasis on extending his range beyond the three-point line? Yeah, Jalen can shoot the three, uh, and he'll have all next summer to work on that. <laughs> Um, he's going to have to play a wing in the NBA, and he's going to have to prove in the summer leagues next year that he can do that. He ain't going to play the wing for me. Thank you.